All right. Um, aloha. And I hope you're all having a good time at the CVPR just like, like me. And the title of the talk today is Context Aware Correlation Filter Tracking. And this is joint work with Neil Smith and Bernard Garnham. And I'm Matthias Müller, a PhD student at Kaust in the very hot Saudi Arabia. So um, first of all, for the people of you who are not familiar with object tracking, I'll just very quickly explain what, what the goal is. So at frame t equals 1, um, uh, there's an initialization step where the, the target of interest is, is specified. Then at frame t, there's a model update um, where basically we, we learn some kind of model and update it. And lastly, there's a step of target localization where in the following frame, we applied the learned model so far, trying to identify the target. And the, the main trick is the, the search strategy. So the one approach would be exhaustive search, where we basically just have a sliding window go across the whole image. But this is, of course, not feasible computationally. So uh, maybe slightly smarter approach is to do some sampling around where the target was last seen. But again, um, what often happens is that the boxes that are sampled don't cover the target fully, and this often causes a drift. So um, basically, this is where um, correlation filter tracking comes in. And the idea here is that we can achieve approximately a dense sampling by simply circularly shifting the target patch. And um, the nice um, thing is that we can, we can then basically put all of those circle and shifts that we get for free in a data matrix. And this is a circle and matrix which has very nice properties that we can exploit. And in the conventional correlation filter tracking, um, the idea is that in like A0, in our data matrix, we have all of these circle and shifts encoded. And we are trying to learn a filter that will regress to Y. And, and like, why is the response? And this is usually assumed to be a Gaussian. Um, and the idea being is that from frame to frame, the target doesn't usually move. And if it moves, it moves just a little bit. So this seems like a reasonable assumption. And then there's just a regularizer on, on the filter. And this problem can be solved very efficiently in the Fourier domain. And the, the nice thing as well is, I mean, it can be solved in the primal or dual domain. And in the dual domain, um, this allows the use of kernels and like multidimensional features. Um, there is some related work that's also a framework that was proposed at last um, ECCV. And the idea is that since um, this uh, target that we're regressing to Y is assumed to be a Gaussian, that's obviously not perfect because there are situations with, like fast motion and like motion blur where this, where this assumption does not hold. So the idea here was to basically solve this problem jointly for the filter and the, the target response. And this is done by sampling a few real patches and then uh, I'm adjusting Y accordingly. And you can see this um, is being added as a second regularizer, Y minus Y zero. So now just a comparison of the con conventional CF tracking um, compared to what we are proposing in this work. So in the conventional CF tracking, the problems, as I mentioned, um, are that there's, um, there's often a drift because there's very limited information of the context. There's only information of a very local like um, region, which, which is densely sampled. But if the object happens to move like um, further, then it, it can easily get lost. And yeah, so it's very sensitive to fast motion, background clutter, and so forth. In our formulation, we basically incorporate context into the filter, and we propose a generic framework that allows um, this to be added to pretty much any CF tracker. And th the nice thing about this framework is that it affects the computation performance 
like or like only very minimally. So we can still achieve a very high frame rate. So I'll just quickly show you a comparison visually. So in, in the training step, the, the main difference is that in the conventional CF tracker, there's just one patch A0 sampled, which is where the object was previously. And in our formulation, we sample a few context patches around it. In this work, we basically just uh, pick four patches that are adjacent to the, the previous bounding box. But of course, one could come up with much more sophisticated methods for sampling those context patches, like hard negative mining or like particle filters. And then in the detection step, it's, it's essentially the same. Um, but when you like, go forward a couple of frames, you can really see the difference. So at, in the bottom row, you see that due to the context that we incorporate, the filter in gray above the image has a lot less noise and has a, still a very high response at the target. In the regular formulation, if you look at the filter, you can see there's peaks everywhere. So basically, um, the filter has no idea anymore where the, where the target is. And as a result, uh, you can see in, in the last image that in our framework, we are still able to detect the target and have a nice high response. And in the regular um, CF trackers, you're not able to identify the target anymore. So, so how do we do it? Basically, um, we add this context term to the standard formulation as like a regularizer. And it's, it's a summation of the contact patch, context patches that we, we sampled. And the idea is that we basically approximately regress those context patches to zero because we expect, um, we want the filter to have a very low response there. And I guess, again, this is not like a perfect assumption. Um, it, it would make sense to, to use like a hinge loss, for example, to, to rank the context patches. But the advantage of this formulation is that it's uh, very computationally efficient. And we then solve this basically for all like, possible scenarios. So in, like in the primal domain, for a single channel feature, so single channel features is basically just like the grayscale intensity. And um, the advantage of um, solving this in the primal domain is there's a very fast one-step solution. So it runs at like more than 100 frames per second. And despite being so simple, it already outperforms like baseline trackers like TLD or Struck. And then we can go into the dual domain, which permits the use of kernels. So we can uh, use, for example, like Gaussian kernels instead of a linear kernel. And then going to uh, like multi-channel features, um, we can switch between the primal and dual domain depending on how many context patches we have or how, um, how high the dimension of the features are. So basically, if we have a large dimension of context patches, it's better to use the solution in the primal domain. And if we have a large dimension of features, like for example, for deep features, then it's better to use the solution in the dual domain. And there's like a a few tricks that we do to, ma to make all of our solution fast, and um, please refer to the paper for that, or come talk to us at the poster. So I'll show you a couple of results now. So first, the baseline CF, CF trackers versus the context adaptation. So we have integrated it with a couple of like well-known state-of-the-art trackers. And just so you understand the results, I'll quickly explain the two evaluation metrics. One is the precision rate. So the idea is we basically look at the, the distance between predicted bounding box and ground truth bounding box. And like as is common practice in this field, we use a threshold of 20 pixels. And the other metric is the success rate, which basically measures the overlap and we then use the area under the curve to, uh, to rank trackers. So first of all, this is like uh, MOSSI, which is basically the first correlation filter tracker that was proposed. It uses just grayscale features, very simple. And as you can see here, um, at the very bottom is the original formulation and adding our formulation it like outperforms it by a large margin and also exceeds like TLD and struck. 
and it still runs at 120 frames per second. And, and, um, and you can see also the comparison to the framework AT, which also improves performance but is much slower. And you can see a similar um, uh, pattern for like DCF, which uses your um, Hawk features and linear kernel for SAMF that incorporates color features and um, staple, which was um, from last year. So here you can see like some videos. So for example, the soccer video, you can see there's a lot of background clutter and it really helps to have this explicit com uh, discrimination from context. And the other videos show some fast motion. Here you can see like in, in the surfer, for example, again, this fast motion. And um, here now um, a few, again, like mostly black and white because this is still uh, mossy. Then a few more results um, of DCF, which is now using the, the Hawk features. Then uh, for SAMF, you can see, for example, with uh, the bottle that, that moved past it, since it has uh, context information, it's able to, to still lock onto that. And the diving sequence, which is com considered quite difficult, is also impossible to be tracked now. And like lastly, for staple, you can see there's some uh, very challenging sequences like um, skiing or matrix um, that can be tracked by incorporating the context. Now, Last year, a uh, comparison to state of the art. So you can see like Staple CR places at the top. By now, there's a few more state of the art trackers, of course. And um, again, the C CA um, like context um, places above the AT framework. And that's it. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to take them now. Any questions? So let me yes, actually sure. ask you a question. So I think uh, the key contribution is that you add this new regularization term. Mm -hmm. uh, and the regularization term encourages the weights to be small uh, on the A1, A2, A3. Yeah. So uh, could you explain again why, uh, remind us what the A1s are, how it's distinct from the A0, and uh, why adding that regularizer will effectively uh, eliminate the extra possible location for the target. Sure. Yeah, so basically, so A, like one, two, three, four, for example, the context patches, they are sampled around um, the target. So this is uh, like essentially like background. And the idea is this, um, like in this regularizer, the response of applying the filter to those context patches is approximately regressed to zero. So this means the filter that, um, that we're learning should not fire. So, so basically, um, in any like background patch that has been seen in previous frames, the response will be very low. And A0 is basically the, the patch describing the object. And at this patch, we still want a high response, and in our case, um, like a Gaussian response, for example, because again, we um, don't expect it to move very much in this vicinity. Now, um, how do you know how many patches to select? Because if you select very few, probably you won't get the effect that you want. But is it not the case that if you select very many, eventually the weights are just too small to actually get a good error in the A0 term? Yeah, so, so we did like some experiments and went up to like 16 patches and um, off, like at some point if you keep adding more patches you don't really gain any benefit. So we found four to be like a, like a like decent compromise but as I mentioned before as well, in, in this work we basically just sample them like right around the object which is a very simple strategy but um, uh, what would be better is to do, for example, hard negative mining. So you, uh, you basically take the filter and apply it, and then you look where it has a high response, where it shouldn't have it, and use those patches as context. Thank you very much, Matthias. Thanks.